Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to turn this camera into a cinema rig with some small rig equipment. Now, this is going to be a pretty minimal setup because I found that as I continue to grow in my abilities and experience, I pare down some of the equipment that I end up using and not being so intense with all of the add-ons and all the things that really just weigh me down. And so small rig has a nice set up here just in a box for the A7 IV. And then we also have the Mini Matte Box Pro, which is gonna allow us to filter and do all that great stuff. Now, when we open the box, we have a lot of stuff in this box. So we're gonna pull it all out. We're gonna look at all of the different components and we will get it installed on the A7 IV. So first thing on any of these setups is gonna be a cage you're going to want to add a cage because a cage is going to be the mounting points for pretty much everything that you attach onto the camera. These are great because these support the camera and keep the camera from taking on that extra weight and wear and tear. A lot of these are going to be attached with little Allen keys and so it comes with a tool. We also have a HDMI lock that allows us to protect the port and the cable of course by making sure that if it does get caught up or snagged or something like that, it's not going to damage the HDMI port on the camera. We also have a top handle here. And then in this bag, we are going to have a side handle as well. Side handles are great because it gives an additional point of contact for you to hold the camera with more stability. So let's go ahead and pull out the Allen key. Now there is a tiny little Allen key right here that we are going to need. And I am not seeing a tool that this came with. So you might need to have an additional tool available because sometimes they forget. These uh, Allen set screws are smaller and you may need them. And in this particular setup, it did not come with one. I don't know if that was by accident or not. Now on the bottom here, you can see it comes with its own little tool, which is great because if you need to remove any of this stuff on your own, then you can. And I did just notice something. This actually has the smaller Allen key built into it. So they did not miss anything. Probably should have told me to read the instructions before I started this. What we see here is an additional mounting point for the cage because with just the one screw down on the bottom, it will allow the cage to shift just a little bit. And we definitely don't want that. So we're going to loosen this up a little bit and then also pull the screw out of this front side because this cage also fits a few different Sony a7 cameras. If you noticed on the box, it's not just for the a7 IV, it's also going to work with the a7 S3 and I believe also the A7R4 as well and it may be even the 5. It says the A1 as well but I mean most of these cameras do have very similar body shape and size and so I may come back with some additional information on this cage. I'll try it on some of the other cameras that I have as well. For sure the A7 IV is going to be the most popular camera to use with this setup. So now that we've got these two screws attached and tight here I might get a screwdriver with a little bit more to hold on to to tighten up that main quarter 20 on the bottom of the camera. So let's walk around this cage really quick before we start to add other things to it. You can see on the top here, the top handle mount and all these mounting points are moved forward, still giving us access to the hot shoe here that also has the multi-port. And so if you were with this camera going to use the XLR handle that you can attach to the a7 IV and then add XLR audio and all that stuff into this camera. It's not going to get in the way. You're still going to have these mounting points up here. Everything is nice and flush here, really. So if you look at that, it's exactly flush. So you're not going to run into any issues there. You'll still be able to utilize the cage and utilize a handle in this way. But if you're not going to do that, then you would want to use this handle because the small rig handle attached to the small rig cage means that when you're holding the camera by the handle, it's not putting any additional or unnecessary uh, stress 
on this part right here. Because this camera doesn't have the same mounting points as something like the FX3 or the FX30, you definitely wouldn't want to really put much tension and hold onto the camera when really only the hot shoe is the only thing stabilizing. And that's a lot of stress on that area. So what I would recommend doing is utilizing this handle that comes with this. And then you can use the Allen key here just to slide it in and add a little bit of pressure just to tighten this down a little bit more and make sure that this is not going to come loose on you. So what's great is that this handle also utilizes RE locating pins and so it's gonna hold it nice and tight and so it's not gonna spin on you. There's also some of those uh, attachment points up here as well should you have something that you wanna do attached to the top and then also on the front as well. That's where you're probably going to attach a monitor mount or something like that. I tend to only utilize an external monitor these days when that monitor is going to handle external recording. Otherwise, I'm just using the monitor on the back just to minimize the amount of things that I have going on. As we walk around to the side, you can see we have a cold shoe right here. Uh, we could utilize a Rode video mic or something right there. Just tighten it up into the cold shoe and plug it in over on this side. Then we've got some additional quarter 20s and uh, 3 8 inch with RE locating pins here as well, which is awesome. If we move around to the bottom, you can see we've got a lot of quarter 20 mounts all along here. Then we also have an opening for our battery door. But there's something interesting here that I've seen recently on cages, and that's that this kind of swings out of the way so that you can get full access to the door. They probably did this just to allow the cage just to be nice and close and not have to protrude out. The more minimal you can get with your cage while still providing stability is probably the best. And they did that uh, in this instance just to make sure you still have access to the battery door while still having the slim cage, which is great. On the side here, you also see attachment points for a hand grip, like a, a hand grip leather one or whatever that would go over your hand and hold your hand on there nicely. But if you aren't gonna use something like that, you could attach this handle that came with this kit. And I like the idea of a handle and I, I most likely would mount the handle onto the right hand side because I would be utilizing my left hand for or adjustments on the lens, whether that's to zoom or to the aperture ring. The handle would make the most sense for me on this side, but this is a reversible handle. So I could take these screws out, I could flip this plate around and put the, the bracket here on this side and then attach the handle over on this side. It also has quarter 20s here. So if you wanted to mount the handle on the left-hand side instead, because maybe you're different, you wanna have the handle on the left side and you wanna use your hand on the right for something else. I don't know, I guess maybe being closer to the record button. Everybody has their own personal preferences. But for me, I like to have some sort of a handle on the right hand side. And then I would just use this Allen key and these drilled holes here to put the Allen key in there and just tighten those up nice and tight so that that's not going anywhere. You can see that the handle also has a cold shoe mount on it as well. This could be for a, another like external microphone, wireless mic, something like that. And there are also quarter 20 mounts on the top of it. This is adjustable in height. So if I take this screw here, take this wrench and loosen these, then I can adjust the height of this as well and slide this up and down to where it makes the most sense. I would probably want everything to be nice and flush with the table, so that way the hand grip itself wouldn't off-center the camera when I go ahead and set the camera down. So with those adjustments, I've got that set up right there, and that's pretty good and feels really good. Now looking at this handle, I could tell that this handle actually is already mounted for the left-hand side. So we're just gonna go ahead and flip it around while we have it here, because you can see that the location of the cold shoe would mean something would slide in this way. And so it makes the most sense for me to flip this around right now and have this rotated. The ergonomics of the handle don't seem too different to me. So I don't think it would make much of a difference if the handle was uh, going in the other direction. You probably just would want the handle mounted in a way that would make sense for the addition of anything into the cold shoe. That's what I like about what Small Rig has done with their handles lately. I have a lot of handles that are single-sided and non-reversible, and I just can't use them if I wanted to attach them to the other side. They're great handles, but they're non-reversible. And this one is reversible 
which is a great feature to have. So now that is attached, everything is great there. So another thing with handles is if I was gonna use this HDMI lockdown here, I wouldn't necessarily be able to use that handle on this side and still use the HDMI lockdown. So now we'll attach the HDMI lockdown. You can see that there is a quarter 20 with little pins and those little pins go into these little slots and that allows it to slide back and forth because every HDMI cable is different. And so depending on the size of the HDMI cable, it may take up a little bit more space. And so now you can see here that we have this in place and I can tighten that down. And if I need to slide it around so that I can move it, I just simply rotate like that and then tighten it down. And so depending on the size of the HDMI cable would determine how I adjust that. There's some adjustments here as well. I could just slide this over and then tighten things down and it pushes in as you tighten it down it pushes in and locks onto the hdmi cable which is great very nice mechanism there for pressing and holding on to the hdmi cable not putting any additional pressure on the actual port itself but holding on to the cable and keeping the cable still. So that way, if something grabs it or something snags on that cable, you're not gonna run into any issues with that port getting damaged. The cable, they're fine. If the cable gets damaged, I don't necessarily mind. It's if the port gets damaged on the camera, that's when we run into trouble. So now, uh, if we continue to walk around over onto the left-hand side, you can see we have that lock in place. We still have a couple of quarter 20s down here, should we wanna mount anything more towards the bottom bottom. We also have another cold shoe mount here on the left hand side also. And what I like about having so many cold shoe mounts is I will often have a Rode video mic on here. I will usually also have the Rode Wireless Go system on here as well. And that way I am ready for pretty much anything. I'm ready for run and gun audio. I'm ready for uh, being able to lav somebody up and put a, a wireless lav mic on them. So now let's pull out the mat box. The Small Rig Mini Mat Box Pro is a great mat box. It's very simple to use. I've already had it out and kind of played with it a little bit. And so we will look at it in two different ways of utilizing this because a matte box needs to be versatile these days because we're using lots of different lenses. We have lots of different options available to us. So let's pull the matte box out. Very lightweight, very like lightweight composite carbon. I mean, this weighs nothing. And even when you start to add in some of these rings because maybe you need one based on the lens you're using, very easy, very lightweight stuff. And that's great because in a kit like this, I want to be able to get the look that I'm going for and not be totally weighed down, which is why I'm building this out the way that I am. So this is the Sony FE 24 to 105 lens, and uh, this has a filter thread of 77, and this kit comes with a 77 to 95, and it also comes with an 82 to 95 step up ring. And so if I pull this off and I have a filter on this lens, so I would probably want to remove this filter or perhaps leave it. I mean, this is a circular polarizer and I'm throwing some ND on the front. So I think I'm actually just going to leave this on the front and we would grab our step up ring and start to thread it onto the inside of our filter. So threading that on like so, just gonna be a little tricky because this is a circular polarizer and it rotates in and of itself. So I don't wanna get it too tight on there, but that's good and I think that'll be good enough right there. With this particular matte box, it comes with expansions as well that allow me to add in an additional two filters. I only have one filter right now, so I'm just gonna add in the one filter. Now with this set, you kind of pop this little lever back here and you slide this off. It is a little bit tricky to slide off and get it slide, uh, slide back in. And so I still haven't mastered getting this in and out without feeling like I'm going to snap something. All right, so let's go ahead and open this thing up and get a filter in it. So the matte box slides apart like this and then you're able to slide a filter right in. And so I have a, a Tiffin Precision Optics filter here. This is a graduated ND filter that um, I just picked up. Typically, I have been utilizing a different matte box system, and so this is the first time that I am utilizing just a straight filter, a slide-in 
filter in this way. So what's great about this is that it is a very large piece of glass and very nice glass. So I'm gonna take one of these uh, expansion trays here and I'm just gonna very carefully slide it in. You can see here there's a little lever to pull out that allows me to slide the filter into place over here on the this side and then pull this little lever out and then it slides in and holds that nice and snug in place, which is uh, pretty darn cool. So now I just need to make sure to line everything up accordingly and make sure that I don't have this flipped over the wrong way. I want the darker area, of course, to be at the top. So we will slide this back. There we go, slide it right in. The problem with things that are extremely lightweight is that sometimes they are a little finicky. And so very carefully, there we go, got it. And we will pull back the little lever here and snap this in like so. And that is nice and attached now. So now I need to add it back into the map box itself. And so we will look at sliding this in, but it does look like perhaps I need to flip over the filter. The filter looks like it's in upside down. Boom. And we are back in action. And now I can run the slide right in with the filter in place. Snap everything in. Just takes a little bit of pressure to do that. And with that snapped into place, we are now ready to just mount it to the front of our camera. So we'll loosen this up a little bit and slide it right on over the step up ring and we are ready to go. So now what's great about this is that it's barn doors and everything have great coverage. And so if you are in really bright situations with a lot of light spill, there's a lot of control with this map box. With these, they slide out like so. And so we can create a nice coverage, even if you needed to go a little bit wider with the barn doors, still a lot of coverage there. So, I mean, take a look at that. That is amazing. So what this map box also has is a quarter 20 mount down on the bottom. So if you're running rails and you wanted some sort of map box support, it's very easy to attach that here. We've got the quarter 20 and locating pins as well. Of course, being that this is attached to a circular polarizer, it is going to rotate and that is maybe a little bit of an issue. I probably wouldn't run a circular polarizer in this configuration, but it's nice to know that I could. And as long as I'm keeping um, on top of things and not letting this get away from me and rotate and get sideways or, or get bumped, it's probably not going to be a problem. And I also could keep my finger right on the bottom of this and keep it supported. So as I'm running focus, I'm also able to just stabilize that map box and keep it from rotating. This is extremely light for a cinema setup, just kind of a run and gun. Obviously, there's some things that are missing on a setup like this that would make it better, such as a follow focus and perhaps um, maybe a little bit of lens support with some sort of a bracket or whatnot on the bottom. But if you're going for something extremely lightweight, yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't run the circular polarizer at the same time. You would want something that's very fixed. And I know that I can reline things up because I've got the center line here, uh, the red dot, and then I also have the center line of the map box and so I can make sure things are lined up. But at the same time, like this is not the way that I would configure this. I would love to have a circular polarizer on this, but I wouldn't want to have it in this instance where I'd have an issue with the, the whole map box rotating. A more likely scenario for me with this setup would be utilizing something like one of these IRIX lenses. I absolutely love the IRIX lenses. Their prices are amazing. And I've been utilizing these lenses when I shoot pretty much anything um, because they're so versatile and cost effective. I shot an entire music video using IRIX glass and uh, it's already 95 millimeters so you don't need any sort of a step down. I would just slide it right on and uh, make sure it's lined up. It also has uh, that same alignment right here. You can see here, nice straight aligned and I can tighten this down 
and we are locked and loaded. And that is more of a configuration that I typically would use for video. I would only use uh, my Sony glass if I needed autofocus. Most of the time I'm using these Irix lenses just because they're so fantastic. You can't beat the price. And for my budget, Irix fits the bill. So this setup right here is absolutely fantastic. You can go and shoot pretty much anything with something like this. You've got uh, light control up here with the matte box. You've got filtering abilities. You can put uh, two to three filters in here, as well as, you know, potentially something else on your lens, depending on the lens, attaching additional circular filters to it as well. And you have a lot of support on your camera. I feel safe and secure with this because of the handle on both the side and the top. And then of course, the matte box being securely attached to the lens. And I feel like this is a better solution here probably than using the step up rings even because it's just so tightly secured to this Irix glass. And then of course I can close this matte box up very easily covering the entire lens right there. I mean, that's covering the entire filter and lens. And then I have the door up here. I can pull that down and it doesn't quite close all the way because I have the additional filters in place, but it doesn't necessarily need to because it's already fully covering everything and protecting everything right there. So an awesome solution from Small Rig. This is a very affordable kit. The most expensive thing that you're gonna run into is actually your filter. The uh, cost of filters are not cheap. And so that's something to consider before buying this map box is what filters are you going to purchase and what kind of budget do you have for those because they can get kind of pricey. Other than that, this cage and handle system fits every need that I have when I'm out doing run and gun style shooting, as well as the matte box, adding that filtering and that light control. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Is there anything else you'd like to see in a build out? I would love to do more of these in different configurations, just trying different things and seeing what works and even trying some of the things that work for you guys. So let me know down in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.